it's science time. So we are learning about Earth and space and science. See, this is our unit three. Chapter seven, we just finished about the Earth's surface. That's when we learned about the land, the water, the soil. And this time for chapter eight, we will be talking about, this is a whole unit, uh, chapter eight is going to be about weather and climate. So weather, it occurs in the lowest part of our atmosphere. Without the water on Earth's surface, there would be no weather. We need the water to have weather. It is the sun's energy heating and evaporating this water and producing winds that drives the Earth's weather machine and climate system. So for chapter 8, go ahead and look at the chapter 8 page that I will upload and put for you in Shobi. So look at what chapter 8 is going to be dealing with and talking or what we're going to be learning. Weather and climate. So let's look at the scripture. Before we begin, let's pray. Before we start talking about weather and climate and scripture continue on that, let's have a word of prayer. Close your eyes and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for today's science lesson. I pray we learn. Help us learn something new. In Jesus we pray, amen. So there are many things in our atmosphere happening around us. The weather is everywhere. It's in everything that we do. God designed our atmosphere to contain exactly what we need to survive on earth. Weather and climate reflect the condition of Earth's atmosphere. So these are some verses. I'm going to give you some verses that I want you to read on your own when you have some time. I want you to look up Joshua chapter 10, verses 12 through 14. Joshua chapter 10, verses 10, verses 12 through 14. Also, that's going to be found later on in page 250. When we, when we look at in our science book at page 250, you can read that also in your science pictures when we continue on later on in that chapter. But in Joshua 10, 12 through 14 says, um, question that I want you to, to look at is, how did God use the sun to help Israel? with a battle in Joshua, you know, there's a, there's this war or something battle. God used the sun. So I want you to look that up about the sun, but also before you look at that one, let's look at also another verse. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse 17. And that one is in two, page 242 in our science book. Let's look at page 242. And 242, it talks about the Earth's atmosphere right there. Yeah. And it says, where does 1 Thessalonians 4.17 say, we will meet Christ when he returns, when God comes and he comes back, he's going to be on something, part of the weather. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Look it up and find out when we meet Christ, where? It says, 
We will meet Christ when we return. Where does where does it say? What where does First Thessalonians four seventeen say we will meet Christ when he returns? Pretty amazing. So what do you know about weather? What do you know? Just think about it. You've learned about weather since you were in kinder, pre-K. What's the weather? Sunny, cloudy, rainy. Those are some of the things you know about weather and climate. I also want you to think about what you want to know. What do you want to know about weather and climate? There's some things you want to learn about weather. Maybe lightning, maybe thunder, maybe hurricanes, or anything else in the weather. And I want you to keep thinking about what you want to learn, what you did learn. What have you learned about the weather? As we learn in Chapter 8 about weather, today's lesson, let's look. If you have the page on a different device, um, we are in, it's called, What is Weather's Atmosphere? So today we're going to be talking about the atmosphere. It says, get ready to learn. Where does a helium balloon go when you release it? Have you ever had a helium balloon? Those balloons that have a little string and you're holding on to it and... Oh no, the balloon! It's gone. Where does it go? You know, one time for my daughter's birthday, last year actually, she turned 15 years old. And I bought her, never again, 15 helium balloons. Oh my goodness. You should imagine me with 15 balloons going crazy. Some balloons flew away. Bye, balloons! They were going away. I could not fit in my car because the balloons were so big. They were everywhere. I will never buy so many helium balloons. Never, ever, ever again. But where did those balloons go? By the time I got home, I was going to decorate real pretty. I probably had four balloons left. I'm sorry, I can't. I don't know where they left, where they went, but let's learn. It says here, what do you think eventually happens to those balloons? The blanket of air that surrounds Earth affects that balloon. That air also figures into how we actually blow up a balloon, a bicycle tire, or a beach ball. In this lesson, you will get a chance to understand the connection. We're going to see how it's all connected. The air, the balloon, everything. How about, let's talk about beach balls. Beach ball. What gives a beach ball its shape? Why is a beach ball circle? If you blow one up, it says you blow one up. If you have one. And see how high the, the ball bounces when you blow it up just a little, partially, and then completely. If you have a pump, you might also try this with a soccer ball or a basketball. When the basketball, you know in the classroom we had two balls. One, actually, yes, um, we had some that had air and one that didn't have that much air. So when you want to bounce the balls, they work higher if they have a lot of air but if they don't have that much air they don't bounce as much so this has to do a lot with air and our atmosphere it's really amazing how the atmosphere if you go to page let's look at the definition on page 242 atmosphere it says is a blanket of gas, repeat with me, atmosphere is a blanket of gas that surrounds some planets. 
So here we have something that surrounds. It means it covers. It covers our planet. And all the planets have a different atmosphere. But today we're learning about Earth's atmosphere. Earth's atmosphere. Let's see. What does it have? Earth's at at atmosphere is a mix of nitrogen. Say with me. Nitrogen. Oxygen and other gases. God designed the atmosphere with just the right amount of the different gases for us to live on Earth. So as we're learning about atmosphere, we continue. I want you to keep reading that on your own. Because if I read this word for word, we will have a very long lesson. But this video needs to be not that long. So I just want you to read the whole chapter, um, sorry, just lesson one, that's it. Just read all of lesson one by yourself and look at the Earth's atmosphere. And then it continues on page 244 with air pressure, the pressure. Let's read that definition, it says, right here. Gravity holds you to Earth. Do you see how Miss... Lupita's not flying around in the room. You are not flying around in the room. It's because there's gravity. Gravity holds us. It holds us to the earth. Gravity also holds down the atmosphere. Since gravity pulls down on the air, air pushes on things with a force. Air pressure. Say air pressure. Air pressure is the force of the air pressing against everything. So I want you to continue to read about air pressure. And then continue on page 246 about the layers of atmosphere. The atmosphere is like the blanket, but the blanket has different layers. So that is the ozone, the ozone layer. Say ozone. Ozone is a gas that can do good things and bad things. So read about the layers right here. See? That is on page 246. And I want you to read what's good and what's bad about the ozone layer. That is all, and that's the end of what we are going to be talking about lesson one. I want you to go back and read it detailed, all the lesson one. I am going to upload for your science activity a lesson one guide that you can look in your lessons and you can practice and look for the answers and look for what you're learning about lesson one. And... Do some of those fun things. Um, if you have beach balls, basketball, soccer ball, any kind of ball, I want you to check the air pressure. I want you to squeeze it and see, hmm, is it a lot of air, not that much air, and then bounce and see how it bounces. Play today with a ball with your family, with your parents, and do some basketball hoops or um, have some fun and go outside, take some fresh air with your uh, either with a basketball or soccer ball or something and um, check that out um, and read that lesson as you read the lessons and think about the atmosphere and think about the air pressure and think about how God created all of it perfect for you and I to be breathing that air, to be breathing all that. He takes care of us. He designed us. He loves us. So it's exciting. So for today, I want you to finish your math work, your science work. If you didn't finish yesterday reading your chapters and your reading, go ahead, finish everything that you have to do from yesterday to today and get on happy numbers to practice more of our math skills and pray, spend time with Jesus. Don't forget, Friday at 11 a.m., Friday at 11 in the morning, 11 a.m., we will have, drum roll, our first 
Zoom meeting. Yes. We're going to get to see everyone. See everybody. Tell your friends. Everybody. Don't forget. Friday, 11 a.m. Zoom meeting. I'm going to put the code on Dojo, Class Dojo, and you can go ahead and learn and, and just prepare. Some of us are preparing. Students are going to sing a song. Some are going to play a piano, a hymn, or some maybe it's a surprise. They're just going to have some fun together. So see you later. Have a good day. Bye.